Good morning. I had a request for a video to show how we ball from a hank of yarn. Um, the lady who made the request said that she has stopped buying hanks because she can't figure out how to get them in a ball without ending up with a whole ball of yarn barf. So I will show you. Firstly, obviously, you need to undo the hank and then most of the times it will fall open like this, but if it doesn't, try to find the little pieces of yarn that's um, attached to the hang to hold it all together so that you can properly separate um, the strands from one another. Now the next thing is give it a bit of a shake. Especially with wool, pure wool like merino or any other fiber that tends to catch like this is merino and linen so to loosen the fibers a little bit from one another I just give it a bit of a shake and I move them around without messing up the hank it's still hanging nicely but I'm loosening the fibers now you need two pieces of equipment you need a ball winder this is a knit pro ball winder it's a very big one you get small plastic ones in most of the haberdashery shops I don't like the plastic ones very much, they don't last and they tend to, the first thing that they do when they start going down is they yank um, the, the yarn into the, um, what do you call it, the mechanism that rolls it, into the gears and the, the yarn ends up black, full of oil and broken most of the times. So I've opted because of the, um, I always work with natural fiber and most of them are sold in hang so I invested in the Knit Pro Wonder but um, if you are in South Africa there's a local one available that's more or less the same but a lot more affordable. The second thing you need is a swift. Now this is a flat swift. You get umbrella swifts, you get all types of ones. This one is the most simple and easy to make. Also available um, in South Africa and I know internationally you get a lot of different brands. This one is very simple it's got detachable pins that we use to move up and down so that we can get the right size. So I'm going to set the hank over the pins on the swift. There we go. Now I can take off the little threads that have been put on simply to hold the hank together. I can remove all of those. Some people use them, some indie dyers don't. It's not to say that your hand will have these. What it definitely will have is a little knot like this, where the beginning and the end of the hand has been tied together. So you're going to snip this off and then you're going to take one of the two ends and you're going to start rolling it. Now I'm going to take this one. Now you can see here it was outside. Now it goes inside. So for the first round, I'm just going to turn it around to get it on the outside. I'm just going to flip the whole hank to get it on the outside. This one is not too bad, but it needs to move a little bit as well. And then the last one also. And here we go. Okay. That'll do. Now I can put it on the winder. The first couple of turns is very gentle until it has started to roll up here. Otherwise it will just pull out of this little slot. This little slot is to keep your end so that you will have a center pull ball when you are done. What helps is also if you do this. You can just make a, a little knot in the end and then it will sit better in this little slot and it won't fall out. You see now there's a little knot there that holds it in that little slot. That helps a lot. And you can start turning. Now, you need to watch your swift. Don't go as fast as you can. This is not about speed at all. Can you see what happens here? This is because of the fiber. This is linen and merino and the linen catches all the time. Um, and I think here is something else wrong. And I did not put this on a nitty knotty, so I'm not to blame. No, there's nothing wrong. It's just getting the fibers separated from one another. So as I said, this is not as fast as you can. This is as gentle as you can. Let's 
seems that this corner is going to mess me around a little bit. That, that just happens. And it's purely the fibers of the yarn sticking to one another. Now sometimes when you do like bamboo or something, you can actually carry on with something else while you're rolling. But um, this one is one of those problematic ones. And I chose it specifically for the video because I wanted these things to happen so that you can see how to correct them. That is better. Here we go. I'm pinching the yarn with my left hand, but you don't want to pinch too tight. If you pinch too tight, you're going to roll the ball too tight. And when you do that and you use it from the center, you're going to end up with yarn barf. Especially with fibers like merino and linen, um, non-superwash wool, anything like that. It grabs. It grabs each other and it will, it will create a knot in the, in the middle. So don't pull tight and don't pinch tight. Just keep it even, evenly going. You can see now that the swift is running nicely. It's usually in the beginning that you have to adjust a couple of times on the corners, but after that it goes smoothly. Now on a wool winder like this, you can easily wind up to 300 gram. On the normal plastic ones, the cheaper ones, you can only wind 100 gram. More than that will start to fall off the, um, the little floor of the wool winder and the yarn will end up in the gears. With this one, this is a monstrous one, easily 300 gram. Towards the ends I go smaller or rather slower so that it doesn't fly off at the end. And there we go. Now, the first thing you do is you pull this little thing out of the slot so that you will have your um, center pull ball and then tuck your fingers in underneath the ball and pull it off. Now resist the temptation. There's a hole there. Leave the hole there. Do not squish the ball to close up that hole because the moment you do, there's friction on your center pull yarn that comes out and it's going to create a knot and it's going to make yarn buff. So leave that hole there. It gives enough space for the thread to come out easily without grabbing the other fibers. And it's as simple as that. All you need is a swift and a wool winder. I hope it helps you.